you. Um, sorry that I'm going to have this in front of me. I don't like to uh, print things. So, uh, thank you to all those that are hosting this tonight. Um, the City Council, uh, Leader Newspaper, thanks to Nicole. Um, of course, I too want to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. I really want to thank Danielle for that lovely um, message about the young people and that the name of that I really, uh, really resonates with this lovely. Uh, I'm very grateful that we are at the moment. Victoria is in a treaty process and I think that's a very important process. Um, so yeah, I'm in Paul Rowan. I'm the Greens candidate for Northern Victoria. So we actually have one of our Northern Victorian current representatives here tonight. Wendy Loggin, I'd like to acknowledge her. Um, so there are five MPs. Did I say MP or candidate? Sorry. Did I say MP? Existing MP. I'm not sure if I said that. But there are five MPs that represent each upper house electorate. And Northern Victoria is an upper house electorate. Northern Victoria, as many people well know, is huge. It actually takes up 50% of the area of Victoria. So 42. 42. All right. So it's great as a candidate. Thank you. Liberal candidate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it feels like 50% though when you're driving around it, doesn't it? Particularly when you have to go to Mildura and then to Tawal and then here. Um, so as a candidate travelling around the region, three days a week, I definitely, um, definitely am very aware of the transport issues. In the uh, other um, four days of the week, um, I actually work as a tax trainer, so I'm a lawyer, I have a tax and, and accounting background that I apply, I guess, through my law, and rather than, I've given up being a tax litigator, um, and now I train accountants, and I actually drive around Victoria, I also travel to WA and Tasmania, um, training accountants in, um, in updating them in tax law. So part of that role um, is to actually analyse, critique and communicate tax law changes. That's changes at both the state level and the federal level. And those kind of skills, being able to read and understand legislative changes, to actually know what the consequences of those changes are going to be, identifying the unintended consequences, and then to communicate that in a way that people can actually understand them and practically apply them is some of the skills that I'm looking forward to applying in Parliament. I'm, I'm really uh, excited about this campaign because the Greens have an opportunity to win. We, uh, we only missed out last time by a very low number of votes and unfortunately our Shooters and Fishers Party representative um, got in instead of us, only by a couple of hundred votes. So we do hope that we will displace them and, uh, and that the Greens will take that place. So we are facing a big challenge in terms of transport in Victoria at the moment. We are at a critical juncture with a, as you well know, a growing um, population, not just, well, it's Melbourne and then kind of really all just constantly pushing out. Um, tr transport is such an issue, but it's not just an issue about transport, it's really about whole of life issues. Melbourne continues to actually draw people in for work, but push them out further for housing. And this doesn't work in terms of personal and family wellbeing and people's economic security. Uh, we know that too many people are experiencing mortgage stress. Uh, in the, the Whittlesey document it says 40% experiencing mortgage stress, but then another 32% experiencing rental stress in, in this area. Uh, and people are, are really just a couple of paydays away from, from really personal disaster if those, if those pays don't happen for whatever reason. So we need to take some drastic steps in terms of actually creating more livable and more peace in, in people's lives. And part of that is, is actually uh, creating the necessary public transport and upgrading, upgrading the roads. Um, other issues that are important, in, particularly in, in terms of this kind of growth of population and pushing out, is we do need to protect good agricultural land. I grew up um, in the valley on a sheep and wheat farm. I know that's not good agricultural land, yeah? We don't want to keep pushing so far out that we get to that. We need to protect this land. Um, uh, from uh, you know housing, in, but we also still need to ensure there's enough housing and infrastructure development, but well planned. Um, we can't continue to allow green wedges to be eroded. They are essential carbon sinks. So population is um, one of the factors creating the, the challenges that we have at the moment. Inertia is another factor. Under previous governments, there has been massive underinvestment in public transport infrastructure in particular, in services and maintenance of existing public transport and regional roads. Funding has often been sucked up by super toll roads in Melbourne that actually have more benefit for shareholders in private enterprise than for the public. And when there has been investment in public transport and cycling, it's been in a piecemeal approach rather than a coordinated and integrated way. 
There are some positives though, and I have to say that the current, current government um, has done more than previous governments in terms of infrastructure. And, and one thing I'll note is the level crossing removals, um, which has been really important. Um, and also obviously the, getting the, the Murna train station is important. Um, recent announcements also show an improved attitude towards the kind of public transport that's needed. So Labor's announcement of orbital funding and Liberal's, uh, fun sorry, orbital um, tra train networks and Liberal's of funding for regional fast trains at least recognises, or at least it says to us, that they recognise that these two factors are important. So that's orbital transporting, not just always going in and out of Melbourne, but also moving around, not just around Melbourne, but also around the regions as well. Um, is really important, um, and that regions cannot be left behind in relation to public transport. One of the reasons why I think things are going wrong, though, generally, is that governments govern based on silos and often with the thought of the next election cycle. I certainly see this in the tax environment all the time. We actually need to get away from policy development by election promise. It's not healthy and it doesn't create sustainable communities, yet we're all forced into doing it. We actually need long-term planning that's focused on the kind of future that we want. A sustainable one where people are healthy, where they have family time and good family and community relationships. Where they can be meaningfully engaged in rewarding activities. Where they're well educated and they participate in recreational activities. Where they live in a healthy environment that contributes to their well-being. That does not happen unless we have long-term planning. And that, of course, that long-term planning takes into account all future transport needs. And it certainly doesn't happen if we have policy by thought bubble or election promise. Uh, I just want to reinforce that note that things are, everything is connected. So if you look at an example, if someone living here works in Melbourne and you don't have access to fast public transport, you're faced with long commutes, um, which impacts on your physical and mental health and car and maintenance costs. Given that that, that balance just born, I think I'd better move on a bit um, and get to actually the initiatives that the Greens have announced. So first of all, um, we have announced the extended Melbourne Metro project, um, but I'll particularly move on to Melbourne Metro 2. So the Greens have announced um, support for Melbourne Metro project, uh, Melbourne Metro 2. It's part of the Greens' long-term plan to transform Melbourne's outdated train lines into a world-class um, metro system metro system and we know that the planning needs to commence now. So our the Greens commitment to the Melbourne Metro 2 includes rail extensions to Willert and to Windham Vale. So yes we have committed to extending the Murder line from Layla to Willert, including four new stations. We've also committed to more services with high capacity signal signalling on the Werribee and Murder lines linking South Moran in the Werribee lines and bringing high capacity sign signalling new trains to those areas. Um, and also to allow for the Doncaster Rail and, just get this in, uh, the extension and upgrade, upgrading and extension of the um, number 86 tram. Thank you.